Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to. How did you get into politics? We were in the University of Lagos. I had the previous to that. I didn't know that there was any called tribalism. I'm a military brat, son of soldiers. Our parents are, you know, our friends are from all over the country. You know what I mean? Yeah. That means a truly Nigerian institution. I schooled in Kaduna and all that. So in the University of Lagos, at some point in time, there was the sub of 1985, I think, so it's just, I can't remember. No, it couldn't have been. 92 or so. 91, 92. Anyway, or 89, one of those times. Yeah, I think it's 89, sub 89. So that riot, Babangira had ended up saying something like, we have thrown everything at it and it's not working. And I knew that they had a lot of brilliant heads around the table, you know, Okoye, all of those big, big names, Lufalaye and all of them. So it started to stimulate my reason for asking, why will you not be working? Anyway, long story short, I was, I was, I was in Europe. Every, that wave that took all of us, we started running to Europe. I went as well. My dad, hey, my father, I'm not sure he has even forgiven me completely. Because he had an insurance company and I was meant to just, you know, grow into taking over the insurance company and all of that. But when my friends were all running to London, I just said, I'm going. Is that it? You know, that I didn't like yeah. London much. Yeah, I just wanted to go. That was the in thing there. You know, youth, youthfulness can be a challenge because you just follow the, you follow the boss. And the boss may not even be, anyway, destiny is destiny. I ended up in Germany. I was sitting at Hilton on the table with my friends, elderly men who were like European mentors. And they were, uh, there was a paper that was showing us that the Nigerian military dictator had held down the country, and everybody's picture was there, Basso, Dora, uh, uh, Abiola himself, and the whole, the whole works. So when they had explained what was there, where well, I can speak, I can hear the language, I can speak it a bit, but I couldn't read something as serious as a newspaper. So I then asked them one foolish question. I, as you, I said, well, you people, there's something that bothers me. They said, what it is? I said, in our own country, when we were growing up, we used to hear serious stories about MK Abiola, some guy that had a lot of money in all the banks abroad, some guy that can write money on a piece of paper, the bank will honor it, some guy that was a board of chemical bank, board of this, board of... I then asked them, so you mean that kind of human being will be sitting down in prison in Nigeria and the whole world will pretend as if all was right? As you, that... That, that was the beginning, that is and was the beginning of everything the world knows now about me. Luckily, I knew those men somehow, but I didn't really know them, know them. Did you get? On that, yeah, table, you... Where, on that table where I was asking that question was a man named Professor Schmelzer. Professor Schmelzer was one of the leading economists in the German economic industry in Kiel, their university, was a General Angst. General Angst was, at least I hope I pronounced his name well, was a general from the DDR, the Eastern Germany part, before they amalgamated it. There was a Hans Goris, Joachim Goris, who was one of their big lights in, uh, you know, taxation and our government, those kinds of people. There was a man named Urim Fumor who was former head of the French intelligence service. It was that kind of community I was sitting with. And when I asked them that question, they now, when I was young, you know, much younger than this, they now offered, must have been about 93, 94, 94 more, most likely. They now offered to let me find the answers to that my why. And at that time, there was no free internet. So they, they, I used to work, they told me somebody would pick me up the next day in the morning. So they would pick me up in the morning. They would take me to one office. I know that office and I know what they do there now eventually. And they would just, somebody would just come in, key in like something like a password and all that to a computer. And I would just sit there in that room. There was just, just that computer. There was nothing on the wall. There was no books. There was no nothing. I would just sit there. And as you, I started reading the Nigerian file from the point of view of declassified information of secret service in Europe from wow. time in my memoria. So, wow. so let me tell you, when I, when I read, you know, I started reading from today backwards. When I, the more I read, I'll be there maybe after, I'm not a big person, I'll get there maybe like, maybe like 
nine ish, and I won't leave the place until about maybe like six ish. As you, I was a young man, I wasn't married, I didn't have kids, and I would just go back to a villa that I was staying in that belonged to one of the former kings in Germany, as you, and I would cry throughout the night. Wow. And I'll go back the next day, and then I'll continue reading it. When I get back, again, I will cry throughout the night. The night, this was what I did for months. So I started reading what was in the file. Forget about, about uh, June 12. I saw the whole shenanigans of June 12 from Bellevue. I saw the shenanigans of how they created Nigeria from Bellevue. I saw the shenanigans of how they did the religion from Bellevue. I then started feeling that, no, God has been unfair to us. Because I could see the conspiracies and all our leaders, one of the reasons why, although I'm very critical, I'm not too abusive of leaders. I don't like to drag them down. I don't, you know, I don't do pulling down anymore. It's, I've never done it anyway. It was because of that experience. Because I realized immediately that, in fact, our leaders are like, no, pawns are too, are too big. You know how to play chess as you? Pawns are too big. Our leaders are like small straws in the hands of very artful nations who are only after their own interest. So I saw how everything... I mean, I'll give you one that will shock you. When the, there was some mention of the state at that time, and the June Trump issue was there, they now said they were disappointed. You know, there was a problem with us on FIFA, remember? And they yeah. gave us a ban, if you can recall, at that time. And they gave us that ban, and the... the what was in the file was that they hoped they had expected that Nigeria was going to improve. Explode. Improve. Boom. Explode. <laughs> like improve. On, that okay. was going to collapse on itself. Improve. Yeah. So, luckily, we now went to play one match, whether it was down that 17 or something, I can't remember what it was, and Nigeria won. And there was so much excitement in the country that all of the prediction that Nigerians are going to be unhappy, and the whole build-up of June 12th, the failed bank, everything disappeared. Now, they wrote in that file, if I can quote the Baba team, it's been a while now, that they, we are tarnished for Spain, we cannot understand, the gates are in a, we have a nation, they gave them football, because of football, we just step out of this. So, wow. now, what that does for me is that, I mean, come on, as you not being in modest, I've always been a very critical and it can't mind. Straight is. So I started telling myself that, why would these people be unhappy that somehow we <laughs> dodge the bullets? So I read all the way down, then I started feeling that, okay, because you know, we're, we're African, remember, we believe in God and all of that. I started feeling that that God could not have been to us. So what happened? I now spent a little bit more time testing the origin of religion according to what is in their own files. Uh, okay, if these people could do a census during the time of Jesus Christ, obviously they must have been keeping records. This was how I became this. So my first action, as you, God bless you for this question, my first action after I had done was that why would they induce them up? They themselves. They were induced at that time because they were trying to figure out how to introduce the single currency. You know, before then, all the currencies of Euro, Swiss franc, the Deutsche Mark, uh, this, that, this, that was the currency. So they were looking at the date of introducing the Euro. So they had brought all these great experts to come and, you know, think about it. And that was in the midst of people that I was just like hanging out. So I then went and they were, they were taking me and dubbing me, taking me. And so when they now got to her, it was in the office of Joachim Goris that they sat down and they were putting all the models together. So they were sitting down there. I was there too. So I then sat down and I was listening to them. And they were pounding a lot of chemical formula, F of X is equal to D of Y, only to say, to solve a question that if they, if they introduce a single currency, since all of the currencies of the world are backed up by gold, what was how are they going to do it that it will not impact the there will be a gold rush or glut or blah blah, you know that kind of thing that if all of the currencies that are going to be central bank is going to be in, in, in Germany, in Frankfurt, 
and there's going to be a single currency for everybody, and now they don't need to have it backed up by metals like gold anymore. They, somehow they, they chose to worry themselves with what will happen to the price of gold. So they were there, they were battling and battling and battling. As I was battling, I was listening, I was also enjoying being with them, and I was also learning. I was trying to be a trainee, uh, you know, analyst and all that. So whenever I go back to my own place where I was staying, I would start thinking about the same problem that they were thinking. So I started telling myself that, okay, this guy, what is the simple element of demand and supply? Adam Smith said, if this is much, this with this. Then I said, what is the reverse of that? If supply is this, this with this. Then I said, Eureka. So I got, I got a hunch. As you just a hunch. So that to was going to politics. No, not to go to politics. So we are too much in a hurry. The hunch was that by the time we got, by the time we got to the place the next day, and they were still battling, I just told them that, why don't we pretend that the gold zone even exist? What if we just, what if the you guys just release the currency and we just ignore the fact that these goals are in their hands and it will not impact it if nobody is pushing it in the market. And since these are all central banks and government, they can easily just pretend it didn't exist. And then I then said, after all, with all of the crown jewels of the world, it has not impacted the price of diamond. Ah, so they were amazed, excited, happy, at my rationalization, then I asked the wrong question. What do you want? As you, I'm a young man, what should I have? Is not money, can you know what I said? I said I wanted them to interfere in the Nigerian problem. They then asked me, that's what I want. I said, that's what I want. They then asked me to go and find out who of all of these clowns that your people have in Europe say they're in exile that I want them to give the possibility to. So as you do, I then started running the phone. My first desire was Wale Shenka because of all the stories we used to hear about him as young people, you know, this, this, this. The more I tried to reach him, the more he ran away. Because at that time, the Rabata who had the prize and all that, all that story. So I couldn't reach him. I tried to reach him to I couldn't reach him. Then one day, I then started thinking in my mind, that, for this Abiola himself, he has one guy that used to sell bread for him called Daily Mamadou. That Daily Mamadou should be able to answer the simple question, who can I trust with MK Wabiola's, you know, those kind of possibilities. Because I already now knew that this was like serious possibility. This was how Daily Mamadou, well, I contacted, he was sitting in England, obviously while we in exile. Eventually, when Daily Mamadou, we didn't, we didn't know ourselves, when I finally introduced ourselves and all on the phone, he now told me that, well, now listen to the joker. He said, if there is anybody, apart from MK Abiola, that could be entrusted with MK Abiola, is a man named Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Wow. And that then began my relationship with him as far back as 94. Wow. I'm not the queen. I won't tell you all, but I'm not the few things we did. I brought him. I brought him. I brought him the German so-called industry. They had a couple of meetings. They reorganized them. They refocused them. We created the concept of Nalikon. That was that Walishenka was heading because the another school was over infiltrated with spies and jokers, and we started. We gave them. Eventually, we gave them what is called a self-runner. More. Mm. That was okay. how the got, you got started. So when I started okay. fine, they were getting, they were, you know, they were very nervous. And so I now decided that okay, I needed to be the guardian of the process. So all the things okay. you see me do, always providing solution, always coming to TV, always talking, is because I felt that that process needed a guardian. We need to guide it so that it would even work well. And we can say, well. Seven uh, transmission of power among themselves, anyhow. Thank God. That's why you see that there's a line I don't cross with people. Oh. I do not cross the line that implodes or disturbs the country. I don't mind you okay. having your opposition be doing your yak yak yak. I don't mind you, but when it comes to the fact that your plan or your desire is no longer in the interest of Nigeria, I have the first one to be your 